you live in an area with hard water, you're probably familiar with water softeners. They are a type of ion exchange filter which exchanges calcium and magnesium in the water with sodium which comes from salt. The process requires periodic backwashing of the ion exchange resin with a salt brine and this process consumes a lot of salt. Since the brine tank can hold hundreds of pounds of salt, it can go for months at a time without being refilled, but this makes it very easy to forget to check on it and fill it. I've built a sensor to monitor salt levels in my brine tank and report it over MQTT, so I can monitor the levels from Home Assistant and receive an alert when I need to buy salt. The hardware for this project is pretty simple. I used an Olamex ESP32 PoE board, which uses an ESP32 microcontroller along with a built-in Ethernet adapter and power over Ethernet, so I can power the device from my, ne my network switch. The sensor for this project is a Maxbotix ultrasonic rangefinder. It sends out a pulse of sound and measures the time it takes to receive a reply. This sensor has integrated signal conditioning and has an output that's serial, so it plugs directly into the microcontroller's serial input. I chose the version with a 1-inch National Pipe Straight Thread, or NPS thread. I then went to McMaster Car and downloaded the CAD file for a nut, which I then 3D printed here. The, the thread is coarse enough that my printer was able to print it even with a 0.3 millimeter layer height. This threads right over the sensor like this. I then took the CAD file for the nut and made this housing off of it in this nice hexagonal shape. The sensor itself is threaded in with the three wires, the power, ground, and signal, which is a serial signal, and it's glued in with hot glue. I added a capacitor here to stabilize the voltage a bit because the sensor tends to use a lot of power when it sends out the ping, and that was occasionally resetting the microcontroller. So once all of this is assembled here, the board is stuck in with hot glue, the three wires, power, ground, and signal are attached, and the case covering goes on, and it is glued together with hot glue as well. Then the entire assembly goes through the lid of the tank, and this nut holds it on from the bottom, so that keeps it attached to the lid of the tank, the Ethernet jack is easily accessible and I can run an Ethernet wire back to my switch for power and data. The salt is stored in a brine tank. The water softener dissolves salt from the bottom of the tank during the backwash process. By measuring the height of the salt level in the tank, I can reasonably estimate how much longer that salt will last. So, I went looking for distance sensors that can survive in a salt-heavy environment and can accurately measure the distance in the range that I need, which is about 1 meter. I didn't want to use any bare ultrasonic sensors or development boards due to the corrosive nature of the salt. So I chose a sealed sensor from Maxbotics. Communication over MQTT was a hard requirement for my project, so the microcontroller of choice needed to include either Ethernet or Wi-Fi. I also have a preference for power over Ethernet, so PoE with wired Ethernet is my ideal choice. The sensor is powered by 3.3 volts so that the TX output voltage is compatible with the input voltage range of the ESP32. The sensor will send serial data in centimeters by default if no other pins are connected. The TX output of the sensor is connected to GPI36 on the ESP32, which has an alternate function for UART1 receive. This leaves UART0 free for programming the ESP32. A 220 microfarad capacitor is soldered between VCC and ground at the sensor to smooth out power spikes during transmitting. The code for this project is available on GitHub and is designed to be compiled in Platform.io. Once you have Visual Studio Code and Platform.io set up, you can clone the repository from GitHub. Platform.io should then go and pull the ESP32 PoE build information, as well as the toolchain to build for the ESP32 and the ESP32 IDF libraries. In order to use this code, you'll have to edit the header file to point to your MQTT broker. Once you've done that, you can build and upload the code to the ESP32 using the built-in USB port. The code itself is pretty simple, and most of the code is contained in maxbotics.c. This code receives an event every time there's new data on the UART port. It's configured to receive an event every time it receives a new line character, which indicates the end of a message. Once the pattern is detected of the new line character, it parses the data it receives and converts it to an integer in centimeters. The new sample is added to a circular buffer that contains previous samples. When it's time to return a reading, we sort the entire buffer, then we throw out the highest and the lowest few samples, and take the mean of the remaining samples. We then bundle up all of this information, including the age of the most recent sample, 
the mean, the latest individual sample, the number of samples that were part of the mean, etc., into JSON and publish it to MQTT. This is done periodically. So now we need to add our MQTT sensor in Home Assistant as a custom MQTT entity. So if your configuration.yaml file includes a sensors.yaml file, then we'll need to go to sensors.yaml to edit. So we need to create an MQTT sensor in our sensors file for our salt level. In this case, this is going to come in as the raw distance from the sensor. So it's in centimeters, it's not percentage. So the state topic for this is generated by the ESP32 and includes part of the ESP32's MAC address. So it's going to vary for each, each installation of the software. In my case, it is raw slash ESP dash 6ABA77 slash ultra. And then because the value is JSON encoded, we have to use a template to extract the JSON. And in this case, we use value underscore JSON dot dist. Because dist is the field we want to read. It has to be encapsulated within the squiggly brackets to be valid Jinja notation. And last thing we're going to do is add a unit of measurement. Centimeters. So we'll save that and we'll reload the MQTT entities and see what that looks like in the developer tools. So now we've waited a minute for it to publish to the topic again. And you can see our sensor.salt level is giving us a reading of 59.8. In this case, this is centimeters from where the sensor is located to where the salt is. It's not the percentage of salt in the tank. So now we're going to add a template sensor that takes this distance reading and converts it to a percentage. So before we go writing template sensors, we can use the template editor here to make sure that our template works. So since we want to return a value, we're going to need to use the Jinja syn syntax with two squiggly brackets. We're not going to do any ifs or sets or anything. We're just going to do it all in one line. Now it tells us we have an error because we haven't finished yet. So first let's get the state of the sensor. So for that we use the states function. And the sensor is named sensor dot salt level. So now we returned a number. And now let's convert that to a float. So again it's still 60. And put that in parentheses. But this number, again, is from where the sensor is pointing down to where the salt is. So we need to invert it. We want to know how tall the salt level is. So we need to take the height of the tank and subtract the reading we get from the sensor. In my case, my tank was exactly a meter high, which is 100 centimeters. So I can do 100 minus, and that gives me that there's 40 centimeters of salt in the tank. So we'll wrap that in parentheses. And now we need to convert to a percentage. Um, so because my tank happened to be 100 centimeters tall, it happened to also be a percentage. But what you would do here is divide by the height of the tank and then multiply by 100. So if your tank were 140 centimeters tall, you would say 140 minus the state of the distance sensor divided by 140 times 100. And that would give you the percentage of salt you have left in your tank. Since mine is 100 centimeters tall, I can remove the end of that calculation. So now we're going to copy this because we're going to need it later when we edit the template YAML file. So if you don't already have a separate file for your templates, you should create one in configuration.yaml. So that points to a new file we have to create that contains our templates. So now let's make that file. So now that we have a new templates.yaml file, we need to add a section in it for sensors. And you'll end up with sections in templates.yaml for sensors and binary sensors. And they're separate. So within the sensors section, we're going to add a new template sensor for salt level percent.
going to have a unit of measurement of percent. So the last thing to add is the value template that we already created in the developer tools. That goes into state, and it has to be within quotes. So then we paste in the template we came up with earlier, and then save the file and reload Home Assistant template entities so we can see if it works. So now we can see that we have a new entity named salt level percent, and it's equal to 40.53% in my case. You can use this to set automations that run to alert you when your salt level is low. You should set it somewhat high because the water in the bottom of the tank will affect the ultrasonic reading. So if your water softener fills with 20 or 30 centimeters of water for brine, then anytime the salt level gets below that, you won't be able to tell because the ultrasonic sensor will read the distance to the water, not to the salt. So in my case, I've set this level at about, about 32%. When I get down to about 32%, it sends me a notification and I know it's time to buy salt. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please consider liking and subscribing so YouTube can recommend more from me in the future.